I will start my presentation. As I said, when there are less audience, I'm less nervous. So that's my emotional experience of presentation. <laughs> okay. So yeah, Parachivani, this is a Russian word and has yeah, in the presentation I will say like I will explain this concept. Yeah. I think the first I would like to identify some issues in the research about teacher learning and teacher cognition. I think uh, traditionally the rationalism has uh, treated cognition and emotion as two separate things. Yeah, if we look at the uh, definition of teacher cognition uh, defined by book, they think that teacher cognition is what teachers think, know, believe and do. So uh, some researcher has pointed out that, uh, well, how about the emotional aspects? Yeah, this is missing in the definition of teacher cognition. And second issue, I think, is if we look at the Australian pro professional standards for teachers, you know, the first two standards like uh, look at teachers' knowledge of the students and the learning, then teachers' knowledge and the skills in terms of designing assessment and yeah, classroom management, creating a learning environment, interacting with uh, communities, peers and parents. Yeah. Actually, the, I think the professional standard also overlooked the emotional aspects of teachers' job. But uh, we all know actually teaching is also a highly emotional like uh, work. Yeah. Every year I think the certain percent of teachers left the the profession yeah either because they can't feel the value yeah of doing that or overstressed yeah and other reasons. So I think that shows the need to look at teachers emotional aspect of learning and also the process of learning to teach. Uh, and the current research looking at teacher's emotion mostly focusing on the interaction between teacher emotion and teacher identity, professional identity. So the findings from those research indicate that, well, emotion impacts on teachers' construction of their professional identity. On the other hand, teachers' identity also determines their, and guides their emotional decisions. So there is a two-way. This is a two-way relationship. They influence each other. But I think some researcher, yeah, some researcher and also myself, I think, yeah, there is need to explore the dialectic, dialectical relationship between teachers' emotion and their cognitive development. Yeah. And also, what kind of artifacts, especially cultural artifacts, will mediate their emotional development? And the third area I think needs further exploration is what kind of tools teachers has, have used to, uh, the, what kind of tools we researchers can use to approach and analyze teachers' emotion. Yeah, so these are the three factors motivated me to do this research. So the aim, sorry, the aim of my study is I look at pre-service teachers' emotional experience, during the professional experience, the school experience, and how I think teachers' emotional experience should be taken as a resource yeah, for their development. And this, that's why I want to look at the link between their emotions and their cognitive development. So yeah, this is the aim of my study, the nature and the effect of emotion and the cognition yeah, link. So the res I have three research questions. First, how do they perceive their emotional experience during Prague? As I said, the teacher's professional standards, yeah, covers a lot about the skills and knowledge required for teachers to uh, to acquire for their job but uh, how do they perceive their emotional experience? And what are the factors impacting on their emotional experience during the school placement? And the third question is also the key thing I want to look at. What is the link between emotion and cognition development? 
And the theoretical framework I use is Parachivani. This is a, a Russian word and first appeared in Vygotsky's later work when he analyzed the drama. Yeah, he, when he was read, uh, writing drama review, review for drama. And he explained this is term is how a person interpret and understand their emotional experience. So the term has been translated as emotional experience or lived experience in English. So uh, they think this describes a unit of a person's conscious and uh, intelligent perceptions of the environment, how they perceive and interpret their environment. And this concept, uh, uh, Parativani, uh, uh, Vygotsky used a metaphor to describe Parativani, that is prism. You know, the, yeah, the prism, they think is uh, how, like, uh, how human beings interact with the environment and uh, develop and, uh, and how, this par how this interpretation of the uh, interaction with the environment impact on a person's development and the personality development. So at early stage, uh, Vygotsky used this concept to analyze children's personality development, how children interpret their emotional experience and how this impact on their psychological development. So this is, uh, maybe you can read, I can explain. So the original research uh, by Vygotsky is they look at a family, uh, alcoholic mother, single mother family. The mother is alcoholic, alcoholic and he, she had three children. The oldest son is, um, the oldest son is already like at early adolescence and the second son is school age and the youngest is still a, like a baby, like preschool, yeah, preschool age ch uh, child. And they are living, they were living in the same family and with the same environment. But because their interpretation of their living environment is different and that had different impact on their personality development. For example, the oldest son, he had pity for his mother and also two brothers. So this boy had a strong sense of responsibility for their taking care of their younger brothers. But the second son, like um, he's, because he's not, uh, he has some consciousness about uh, the environment, the situation of his family, but he, that half, like we said, consciousness, and also at the same time, he has a very conflicted, conflicted attitude towards mom and the family. So the impact on his personality development is, uh, his, yeah, he shows the conflict and internal contradiction in his personality. So sometimes he hate his mother, think mother is like a witch, because mom, mom is, has always been drunk, yeah. But on the other hand, he also yeah, loved mom, yeah, loved mom. And the youngest one is still at the preschool age, so no understanding of the environment, of the situation. So that youngest child showed the sense of incomprehensible towards the environment and also the in his personality it like a show as uh, disrupted behave like development of his uh, personality and also his uh, uh, intelligent development has been impacted so this is shows like they are living in the same like uh, if we same family same environment same social situation but because of their interpretation and the perception were different and that has different impact on their personality and the psychological development. So if, yeah, we can put an, uh, an yeah, another way is uh, Parativani. It shows, a per it means a person's interpretation of their past experience will impact how that person interpret and perceive the current or the new experience and the further influence the reinterpretation of the past experience. So in this paper, I apply this concept 
for adult learning, teacher learning, yeah, student teachers learning. So because they've already had formed their personality as adult. So I want to look at how their so their process of learning to teach, it will be based on not only their own learning experience, but also their interpretation of that experience. Yeah, especially emotional experience during their during their prac. And that will impact on their professional personality development because they already formed their own personality. So I will look at the professional personality yeah, of teachers. And uh, the analytical framework for this study is I adapted from Michael Michelle's paper. Yeah, this is uh, like a, is a four column table. What, the first one is the social, describing the social situation of the subject's development, like um, their awareness, understanding of the situation. The second column, the Parachivani prism, is how they are aware, interpret, and emotionally related to that situation. Then third column, mediation and interaction with social situation, is how this, their interaction with the situation has been changed during the process of interaction. Yeah, depending on the mediating tools they use or the interaction with others during that situation. Then the last column is how that situation influenced on their psychological development. Here for student teachers is their professional personalities and their cognitive development in terms of learning to teach. So this is the framework I use to analyze yeah, the case in my study. So in this study, the participants are pre-service teachers in both combined degree and MTeach programs for secondary teaching. And there were 31 pre-service teachers participated in the questionnaire survey and 15 of them volunteered to participate in the interview, yeah. And the data were collected from, yeah, questionnaire survey. There are two questionnaire survey. One is pre-prac, pre-professional pre experience survey, asking, I mean, then ask them, okay, what is your expectation or your emotional yeah, expectation for your coming prac? And post prac survey, I will show you the survey. Yeah, so post prac survey, the first part, there are two sections. The first section, I ask the students to read each emotional experience during their prac. And they, there is also space for them to explain, like, uh, okay, why you give this uh, rating for, for that particular emotion. And the second part of the survey is a structured narrative writing, narrative frame. Uh, I'll show you. So this is the, like a first, because the pre prac survey is very simple. I just ask them like, uh, what kind of emotion do you have before your prac and what do you expect? And the second post prac, as I said, two sections. The first section is I ask them to rate, for example, happy and there's 12 emotions. I also give them, okay, is there any other emotion has not been included in the survey you can yeah, put there. And the second part, narrative frame, I give them some sentence starters to structure their narrative. So they need to select one scenario or situation took place during their prac. And the, maybe you can't read, but I can tell. So I ask them first, uh, what's the reason for that like the event uh, or scenario, situation, or problem, whatever, yeah, they choose. And what's your response? And what was your, like, a, have, like a, after the situation, I changed my practice too. I asked them to describe, like, what kind of change they made in responding to that situation. Then how did your emotion change after that, yeah, practice? Whether there is, a, 
changes in terms of their emotional development. Then last question, in reaction to this experience, what type of support you would like to have? Yeah, so those sentence starters structured their narrative. So for data analysis, I analyzed all the data from the pre and the post prac survey and in terms of the pattern, the factors impacting their impacting on their emotional experience and what types of emotional experience during the during their prac. Yeah, from this group of students. And in the narrative frame, I analyzed the narrative because the sentence start starter already gave me yeah, uh, some like hints for the semantic analysis, for the yeah, se the se semantic analysis for the narratives and help me to identify there's some common issue across all the narratives. For example, like in the narrative frames, like what type of emotional experience has been have been identified and uh, what type of issue you know impacting on those emotional experience and I will show you in the data yeah. in the results so the pre prac emotional experience we can see the most uh, frequently yeah identified emotional experience is excited but next one is anxious. So 23% them choose excited, 22 choose anxious. The next one is uh, apprehensive. Yeah. I guess this is because when I was collecting data, that pre prac experience is uh, for most of my participants, this is their second prac. So they've already, we said, survived their first prac. So they were, I think they're relatively, <laughs> they were more confident. So they're quite excited for the, yeah, for their coming prac. And uh, I look at other researchers' yeah, paper on students' experience during, during school placement. Yeah, they say like, oh, most of them are quite anxious or more negative emotions. But this one, like they're half, like half, half excited and, uh, but also, yeah. Mm, yeah, anxious. Then for the post prac survey, because I asked them to read the frequency of each emotional experience, it shows that still happy is uh, has been rated as the always and uh, often, like uh, more than I think almost uh, eighty percent of students after prac they believe their experience were happy. And the next one is uh, inspired. See, almost, uh, I think uh, if I add them, like 65% uh, of them think uh, mo like uh, often and always inspired from their, yeah, from their prac. And apprehensive, still the, like the third one, highly rated in the post prac survey, like half, half of them think uh, this is uh, often and always apprehensive. At the same time, yeah, sometimes apprehensive. And uh, the less frequently cited emotional experience is angry, sad, and uh, distracted. Yeah, this is the... And impacting factor, all these are from the first section of the questionnaire survey. So impacting factor, they rate it what are the impacting factor impact on your the most Im influential factors for your emotional experience during prac that students seems the most influential one 31 percent of participants yeah identify that then supervising teacher the rest like a school context is the third one then my work has not been recognized or awarded and like other issues, some of them said because the long traveling time and the subject has not been valued. Some of them teaching language at the school as a compulsory, 100 hours compulsory at stage four. So students always ask, why do I need to study Japanese? Why do I need to study Chinese? Yeah. So that's why they think, yeah, 4% of them think, uh, yeah, my subject has not been valued. 
Yeah, so this is uh, the impacting factor from the post prac survey, first part. And in the narrative frame, I analyze, yeah, the types of emotional experience included, you know, the scenario they have chosen for the narrative writing is almost a half a mixed emotional experience in that one sit in the situation they have chosen for narrative and the more negative than positive but I think this confirms of the research funding from research from other researchers saying that yeah teaching and the school placement is a complex emotional experience so half of them think it's a, yeah it's a compl mixed emotional experience so then as I said, in their narrative frame, I ask them to identify the emotional experience for the yeah for that situation they have chosen. So I compared the emotional experience they they have chosen for narrative frame with the first section of the questionnaire. Actually, we can see still the like inspired and happy are the most uh, frequently cited one in both. Yeah, section. The the orange one is uh, from the orange one is from the questionnaire. The blue, yeah, blue column uh, indicate the data from the narrative frame. Yeah. <coughs> and the impacting factors I analyzed from the narrative frame. They have identified. What are the factors impact on their emotional experience? The high, the, the, the highest one, number one, is behavior management. Well, that also confirms other research funding. Yeah, most of the student teachers are struggling with behavior management. Then next one, supervising teacher. Their relationship with supervising teacher are also the, influ the most influential one are this. And teaching preparation, engagement. Actually, when I later analyze the most two influential factors, like engagement with student and the report with the students, those are, are also relevant to students as uh, impacting factors. Yeah, so for those two, emotion rel uh, rel uh, related to supervising teacher, I can see, you can see it's half. Like the orange is positive emotion, blue is negative emotion. So like uh, their relationship with the supervising teacher has caused uh, like have equal influence for their yeah, positive and negative emotional experience. And similar to students, their relationship and uh, all the issues relevant to students have same like equal, yeah, similar Im impact for both negative and uh, positive emotional experience. This is also slightly, yeah, in the discussion I would say, it's slightly different from other researchers because their research shows, well, most of students' negative emotional experience are from their supervising teacher or due to the relationship with supervising teacher. And uh, their experience of interacting with students has always been positive emotional experience. But in this survey, it's a bit different. It's, yeah. So the qualitative from data is I, in this presentation, I will show there are four extract from the narrative, like four cases. I give them a, like a neutral gender names because in the survey I forgot to ask a gender. So <laughs> next time I may ask a gender in terms of their relation, yeah, really, uh, their emotional experience. Mm, yeah, if, if you can read, I try to make the font beat, but if you, maybe you can take a couple of seconds to read this extract. So the underlying part uh, is uh, the blank for them to fill. The italic size font are the sentence starter I provided in the narrative frame.
I think if we read this extract, the narrative, we can see this student teacher, uh, the pseudonym is Alex. Yeah, Alex can identify the problem of students learning. Yeah, they were disengaged because they can't see yeah, the relevance of studying geography. Yeah, then the, the, so I'll show you my analysis. Yeah, and then we can see the, her re his or her reaction to that is to, she try to, I, I know this student, so he's a female, yeah. So I will use she, yeah. She, yeah, she try to use the, like a, to create some learning teaching materials to make it relevant to students' life by designing a yeah, case study to compare local suburbs and uh, rural area. And so her emotional experience or emotional response after the change of practice is a lot of stress and anxiety was lifted yeah, when students started to engage with the lesson. And also he said uh, the support she would like to have practical tips. So my analysis is this student teacher was able to identify the problem and the reason why students were not engaged. And she also took action to deal with the problem and based on her understanding, perception of the situation, or adjust her teaching and design some materials. So the emotional experience is like shows the change. Yeah. So the emotional experience is that it changed from stress, anxiety to more enjoyable to teach. Yeah, and he said, I enjoyed creating work for the class. Yeah, so I think these students, we can see that he, he or she is inspired by this successful yeah, action and started want to create more engaging materials yeah or relevant materials and if i analyze this by the analytical framework so the situation is disengaged student and uh, the prism the parachivana prism was she was anxious yeah and uh, stressed but once taking action by creating materials relevant to students life he he kind of like uh, the, we can see the change of the emotional experience is linked with the, situ the perception of the situation and also the change of practice. And which indicate the growth of, or development of knowledge and the skill in terms of how to engage students. And the second one is a case who indicated, who chose a, like a, a situation, he said, I um, was vulnerable. That is, yeah, you can, you may take some, yeah, some time to read the extract. Yeah, she think this experience, she was very vulnerable in that yeah, situation because of yeah, the classroom mani behavior management issue. And I think this student, like the, we can say, the reaction, the problem, like uh, her understanding of the situation is, okay, I lost the control of my class. I, and also she kind of identified the reason. I was too lenient, yeah. And her reaction is seeking support from supervising teacher and also adjust her practice by incor like incorporating some classroom management strategies like seating plan, detention, and award. So the, uh, 
the, ext the extractor, the word that I had a review of my lesson plan indicate she had taken some reflective yeah, practice when she was analyzing her problem. And the two on or artifacts she has created to solve the problem is uh, introducing sitting plan, detention, we said more engaging activity in the class and also she mentioned she changed uh, her teaching style from more teacher-centered to student-centered teaching. And that indicate like a change in her professional personality as a teacher. Yeah. So the cognitive development, I feel, yeah, she acknowledged her, gra her improvement, yeah, things improved after I made these changes. But she also recognized the challenge that oh, every lesson is different. So my successful experience from that lesson may not be generalized to other yeah, teaching context. So this indicates that uh, her awareness of generalizing learning from one context to other context. So that's why even though she didn't, yeah, she didn't indicate whether there is change of her emotion during this process, uh, even after things improved. But I think her perception of teacher's role and has changed. And also she acknowledged the need to generalize her experience from one situation to different context. Yeah. And also, yeah, in terms of the influence of the situation on her, like psychological development, is uh, she feel like oh, I need to have more authority in the classroom. Yeah. And she indicated for more rational relationship with supervising teacher with peers in the same school. The third one is a case of a teacher choose a very frustrated, yeah frustrating situation to happened in the Prague. You may want to look at this. This is uh, very similar to the second case. Yeah, belly, similar to belly is also because of students' behavior problem. But the teacher, this student teacher can identify the problem because they were not respectful. Students are not respectful. She listed the, yeah, their problematic behavior. And she also applied some like practice some strategies to try to change the situation. Yeah, rewarding and, uh, and discipline and uh, yeah, all this. But the emotional, how to say, the emotional outcome or the, her emotional experience after Prague was very different from the second case because I cared least, less, I cared less. He said, I'm more exhausted. Yeah, I don't have any energy to deal with them. And especially this indicate, he said the supervisor in the like support she she's want to have, he said the supervisor need to address this. He said that her classroom and teach students didn't see me as a teacher. So this indicate I feel this student teacher like she yeah, she can identify the problem. The, the perception to the situation is she was not respected and uh, her hard work, she said, I tried this, I tried that, but not being valued. He said, nobody seemed to care. She feel her work has not been valued and also the rejection from the student. She doesn't feel she has been accepted or treated as a real teacher and doesn't have a sense of belonging to that class. He said, that's her classroom supervisor teacher's class. So even though there is action 
enforced, enacted to change the situation, but her emotional reaction to the to that teaching, yeah, class to that class is cared less. I don't care anymore. Yeah. So I feel what we can see is the the perception of not being accepted and uh, lack of ownership of the class caused her indifferent attitude. Yeah. And the influence of the situation on her psychological development is more like a lack of lack of ownership of the class. So even she tried similar type of classroom ma management strategy, she didn't really feel, yeah, like a sense of achievement from that. But it's more like I don't care anymore because they didn't value. Yeah. So I feel it's different from the second. This is. This student teacher frustration came from the feeling that, yeah, all her hard work has not been valued. Also, this is her perception of the situation. Okay, the last one. Sorry, this you. <laughs> I ask you to read all this dense the text. Yeah, the last one is a mixed emotional experience, changing from anxious to empowered. Everyone finished reading? Mm. So, yeah, same like uh, the problem identified was identified. He, this teacher was, uh, I guess this is a, this was a female teacher. <laughs> I just my guess, yeah. So, like, so anxious that, so stressed that, cried in the <laughs> staff room. But uh, luckily, she got a lot of support and encouragement from staff. Yeah, other staff and teachers, and I think it, we can see that uh, he put very clearly. I was worried and uh, uncomfortable with teaching controversial issue, but now this indicate the change of the emotion. Empowered, she used the empowered twice. Yeah, teacher all should have his humanitarian heart, trying to uh, to really. Uh, the, I think uh, who are trying, she missed a verb in the <laughs> narrative. Yeah. yeah, have a better society, awareness of issue, and and uh, also indicate the change from vulnerable, anxious to confident and empowered. Empowered appeared again, and so and also he mentioned the teacher's role of being experimental and brave. Yeah, so I think this, yeah her experience uh, like uh, the change is that teachers all need to have this humanitarian heart and it shows that she not only have a successful lesson but also developed new beliefs about a teacher's pers professional personality and the responsibility of a teacher and also like a push the boundary, teacher's role being experiential and brave also indicate like the, the personality development, professional personality as a teacher. And so uh, the, I analyzed, I used this frame, framework to analyze the, her situation is like trying but not sure whether she should teach this controversial issue, but the support from other teacher give her 
like power to do that, give her courage to do that. So her emotional change is very evident in this narrative and is highly impacted, supported by the staff and other teachers. And this change shows that it's more like upward development in her person, professional personality. Yeah. So overall, I think uh, I summarized the findings the finding from my study is the most frequently reported emotional experience are happy and inspiring. And uh, this is uh, consistent through pre, post survey and narrative frame. And this is also consistent with the finding from Bloomfield's study, and, but uh, slightly different from yeah, Nguyen and uh, Gao and the Benson study that in their study, student teachers reported more negative emotional experience yeah, during the prac. And uh, for impacting factors for student teachers' emotional experience, I think as we have seen from the, yeah, the graph that student, st their students and their supervising teachers, yeah, this is also different, slightly different from some studies that Students are the major cause of positive emotional experience and the supervising teachers are the cause for negative e emotional experience. Here in my study, it's more like a balanced yeah, impact from, for both yeah, group of yeah, people during the prac. So the relationship, in terms of relationship between emotion and the cognition, I think yes, that positive emotions uh, both positive and negative emotions influenced on pre-service teachers' experience. And especially the positive perception of their experience can enhance their creativity and uh, their ability to innovate in their teaching, to try something, to make changes. Um, and also the relationship between their emotions, perceptions, and the practice the findings from this study shows that there is a dialectic relationship between all the three. Yeah, their emotional experience is impacted by their interaction with the social situation and also impact on their interpretation. But at the same time, their interpretation and the perception of the situation impact on their action they were take. Yeah, they, they took. Yeah, during the prac in responding to that situation. So um, here I think the support from supervising teacher and other staff and other student teachers has been, yeah, has been very, how to say, has been shown very important for them during the prac and uh, also reinforce their perceptions of the situation. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So this um, this confirms some research finding that uh, posit uh, the emotions are related with their cognition and the context and the both positive and the negative all influence down their teaching experience. Yeah. So for negative emotional experience, I think uh, in Johnson and the Wooden's study, they think negative emotional experience is the growth point for teachers' learning. If you have conflict or contradictory yeah, emotional experience during your practice, that's indicate this is a starting point for you to grow. But in my study, I feel like especially for example, case three and case two. Case two, she had a challenging situation, especially for classroom management. But after she talked to the supervising teacher, reviewed her lesson plan, and tried some classroom, man uh, classroom management strategies, like actually shows improvement. Not, she didn't indicate improvement from negative to positive emotional experience, but she indicated the learning, the improvement of her understanding of teaching styles, teachers' roles, but the third case, the one who said, okay, I care the less. I don't care anymore. I'm too exhausted. I think the main difference is the whether is the like a, the creating of the tools to solve the problem and also support 
because the third case, he said, I expect more support from my supervising teacher. That's her classroom. Seeds indicate her supervising teacher didn't give her enough support for classroom management. And also the first case, you know, the, uh, the teacher who taught geography, yeah, he said, I create some teaching material relate students' life and the subject. Yeah, and that, the in, like the practice of that, in, uh, application of that teaching material also enhanced her, like in both emotional experience and uh, her understanding yeah, of teacher's role. And the fourth case, I think you can see a very successful upward development yeah, because they tried a controversial issue. So all these cases, I think, indicate the appropriate creation of tools plus the support from supervising teacher or other staff in the school are very important for their growth. So only negative emotional experience or contradiction, I feel, doesn't ensure the growth. Yeah, this is slightly different from Johnson and the Warden's study. So if I summarize the, the results of the study, positive emotional experience definitely lead to more learning and the creativity. But for negative emotional experience, if there is no enough effective and cognitive support, may lead to no learning. So even like the third case, she tried a lot, but she said, not valued. No, I don't care. Yeah, I do not really care that much. I'm too tired. But if there is enough support and also appropriately tool created to solve the problem, negative emotional experience can lead to learning as well. So I think the key thing is uh, yeah, support and the creation of tool or artifacts to solve the problem. Yeah, so the implications from this study is uh, yeah, supervising teachers need to give more support to student teachers, especially for classroom management. Yeah, this is an area they indicate support needed. And also explicit feedback from supervising teacher. I didn't include in this slide, but I had another student teacher participate in the study said, my supervising teacher kept saying, Okay, well done, good work. But never show me how to improve or how to solve the problem. Yeah, so I, like um, in this one is uh, like the, it's not that clear, but uh, the both case two and case four, they got a lot of support from staff and other teachers, yeah. Like especially for classroom management, second case, yeah, she asked the supervising teacher what kind of strategies she can use to improve the classroom management. Peer support is also important. It's the one has been mentioned by one case. And I think reflection and acknowledgement of emotional experience during their professional experience is something we need to do. I think now for PREC, in the university, most of the students come back from PREC, they, they all are required to write reflection. But I think in that reflection, their emotional aspects of teaching and practice may need to be acknowledged, may need to take into consideration. Because we can see the link between their emotional experience, their perception, and their learning. Yeah. I think the contribution of this study is the uh, Parachivani prism can be used as an uh, analytical framework to explore the relationship between their emotional experience and uh, cognitive development. And uh, the quantitative results from this pre and the post prac survey can enrich the existing research on teacher emotion. And also I think the, the free yeah, the narrative frame I've used in my data collection can be used also as a reflection tool for student teachers to reflect on their, it can link their emotional aspects and their learning and the practice. Yeah, so these are the yeah, contribution.
I think. <laughs> yeah, I have. And I've already submitted this paper to the Journal of Teaching and Teacher Education, and I'm waiting for their feedback. <laughs> and I'm waiting for your feedback. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Thank you for your time. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, any feedback or comments? The example you gave, I've forgotten the names, maybe it was Dana, mm. the one who was teaching about the Syrian refugees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. The, third, the fourth one, yeah. There, the, the emotion is very much before the teaching event rather mm. than after the teaching event. So mm. I was thinking mm. that whenever we take on something that has an element of risk, mm. whether a performance on stage yeah, or yeah, yeah. Yeah. We're more likely to be more anxious about that, mm -hmm. and then when it works, when we come out of it, when yeah, we feel successful, or yeah. confident, then um, there's a very positive emotion that comes mm -hmm. from that. So, I wondered if you wanted to say anything about that aspect of the analysis. Some of this is very much retrospective, and some of it is yeah. I think because, uh, as I said, the concept of Parachivani is. Uh, their perception of their past experience will influence their perception of current or even their reinterpretation of past experience. So that's why I ask them, what's your, like, uh, your emotion yeah, involved in that situation? And after you have some ch changes in terms of practice, what's your emotion experience? Yeah, I think some of these changes of emotion are very common, like you said, before we took a risky action, we always, I think most of us were anxious. And if it was successful and we feel yeah, encouraged. But I feel the th fourth case, uh, I, I chose that case in my paper because I feel that it's not like uh, the, the change of emotion is follows like a wheel, it's like common sense change. But it shows that uh, it's not only the change of emotion, but also her understanding of a teacher's role. Like teacher should be like a humanitarian heart, should, has, should have a humanitarian heart. Teacher should be brave and experiential. That's more like the learning she gained from that experience. Yeah. And I, th I guess like uh, after that successful experience, this student teacher may will be more willing to try like more new things in her teaching or in his teaching. Yeah, that's what I see the, like the, um, the learning yeah, or the growth in her like, development, yeah, teacher's development. Hi, thanks, it was re really enjoyable. Um, the reflection I had was kind of at the end where um, there was feedback from some teachers, I think, that they wanted uh, more constructive feedback um, and not just positive feedback. Explicit or, feedback. Explicit feedback yeah. of, of both positive and negative. Mm -hmm. and, and I was thinking maybe that the teacher, the supervising teachers were perhaps in that situation sometimes overly conscious of the emotional state oh. of, the, of the prac teacher mm -hmm. and maybe withholding the, the um, constructive feedback from them. Is hmm. there any uh, indication through the study of that dynamic? Well, yeah, unfortunately, I didn't collect data from supervising teacher. Yeah. yeah, I feel like my student teacher is like saying, oh, they give me, actually, for that case, he said he received general positive feedback from supervising teacher. Well done. And keep doing. Yeah. But he said, I want more explicit. How? Uh, okay. Yeah, how to improve or whether I did it correctly or not, and how to improve. That's what he indicated. He said that sometimes, I guess for supervising teachers, it's like they're either too busy, or they don't know how to give explicit feedback to student teachers. Yeah, so I think the next stage of my study, I would like to interview or collect the data from supervising teachers to see their perspectives. Yeah, because yeah. I think the the dynamic here of acknowledging failure mm -hmm. the boundary of psychological safety mm -hmm. is very still not uh, an emergent thing 
Mm. It's an emergent thing for teaching as a profession. Mm. Yeah, I was speaking to my mum, who used to be a teacher for 30 years, about this on the weekend, and, and uh, mm -hmm. she said it was, it was far, speaking about failure was amongst peers, but never with authority. With the, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you. I may need to yeah, conduct some yeah, interview with supervising teachers to see how their perspective, their emotional experience in supervising a student teacher. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Any other? Yeah, Lina. Veronica, it's an extremely interesting topic because I know that this Perajivani and now suddenly so becomes also in almost on top. Oh. All you know, topics in theory, socio-cultural theory as well. So there is a lot of almost a new wave of research coming. So it's very, very interesting to hear. Hmm. Actually, perhaps two questions, but more perhaps also thoughts. Hmm. Because the way the Spirovania now seems unfolds, especially in the analysis, seems there are three components. One is emotion, hmm. which is there. Then almost perception of emotion, framing how I yeah, yeah, understood yeah. it. Maybe the experience was negative, but I still understood. No, it's a learning opportunity. I framed it hmm. as an opportunity to learn if I failed in the first lesson. And then the third thing is, of course, what you perhaps called cognition already. Mm, mm. It's kind of a very interesting continuum, which goes almost could shift from negative, negative emotion positive framing, mm, mm. <laughs> again, may, might be negative learning, you know, mm, kind of, and yeah. so on, you know, kind of exploring that dynamic, and then especially in this dollar's case, it seems exactly that one, a little bit, uh, aspect which would be very interesting to look, is that also emotional experience and perception of that experience when she was teaching. Yeah, yeah. You know, kind of, it's almost yeah. like tracking those emotions. Right. Well, it would be extremely interesting. Yeah. Thing to see. Yes. Yeah. Uh, another now small actually question would be. Yeah. I was thinking, you know, because you had man mentioned that most students were reflecting as a part of their reflection on their emotions during practice. Have you observed any attempts at least I would say to develop that emotional literacy and I would call that literacy oh. before they go? That oh they very good point. Mm. You know, we're prepared to frame, to have some dis different experiences and frame them in different ways. That's a very good point. You know. Yeah. Actually, I think, uh, yeah, we may need to, yeah, that's an area we need to, f yeah, for future, like, uh, teacher education, an area we need to focus on is their emotional literacy. So I'm thinking, uh, you know, that narrative frame, I feel like after I collect the data, I feel like they, in the interview, they said, okay, after I feel the frame, I'm more clear about like my emotion and my reaction and how I reinterpret my emotion and the change of my practice and for future. So I was thinking maybe that frame can be revised, yeah, for pre-prac or pre-school experience for them to think about how you are going to interpret your emotional experience, especially negative ones. But I also had case, some students said I had very positive emotional experience, positive learning experience. Then I said, oh, that was your like further learning or your reaction. He said, that's all. I'm happy with <laughs> what I had. So it's like the learning stopped from there. Yeah. yeah, for this it's only because I only choose four cases, but I, ha I have 15 interviews. So I'm thinking next paper, I will analyze their interview data to see yeah, the, how to say, the change or the process of their emotional experience in depth and also how, yeah, like different types of learning trajectory. Yeah, I mean that. But thank you, that's a very good point. I think uh, we need to increase the, yeah, I think now literacy is such a popular term, academic literacy, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the emotional literacy, yeah, it's true. I didn't find another word, but I thought it just really equipping people, teachers with tools to, to deal with those experiences, because for sure they hmm. seem so influential as it comes from many studies, many, hmm. that's a good 
drop at that point. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I think this. I hope. The practical implication could be what you are doing extremely valuable. Yeah, I would well, not only. <laughs> try next year group of students before their prac and show them, yes. Open learning environment. <laughs> <laughs> Open learning environment. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for sharing the interesting insights from the study. Uh, I was wondering uh, uh, how much it is possible, what is the scope of uh, abstracting the insights about interplay between emotion and cognition to um, abstracting it out from teachers, profession of teaching, uh, and generalizing it to any profession. Uh, well, possible. I think uh, yeah, the framework or the conceptual, the concept of parachivani can be applied to other profession, not only teaching, but other profession. You like you're learning to be a professional person for that, yeah, profession. I think uh, it, I think this framework. A concept can be applied, but uh, yeah, the key thing is uh, uh, I'm not sure about the other. For example, what profession? Uh, I'm so thinking. The last framework you showed uh, in terms of positive learning. Ah, positive yeah, yeah, yeah. Positive experience. Yeah. Negative experience. Learning, yeah. Learning. Yeah. So um, can that be? Yeah, I mean, to other professions or in terms of like, let's say, education itself, classroom teaching itself? I think, yeah, this concept can be applied to other profession. If that profession is also highly emotional, yeah, because I feel teacher, teaching is a really highly emotional job. Even though the teacher's professional status never mentioned about that, the teacher's personal life or personal emotion, but it is highly emotional, your interaction with students all in fact on your emotion and your perception of that situation in fact on your decision making and I think that can be applied to other situations as well especially the profession which involved a lot of interaction with people yeah I think so thank you <laughs>